guys, Robert Strong Thumb here, back with the arena, and this is our second and hopefully last part, with 15 hours remaining in the actual Chaos Arena. Just a refresher, this is our deck, even I have forgotten it, and it's mostly in the 3 and 4, so a mid-range, maybe, maybe. Does not have a lot of early game, I remember, we have 5 wins, 1 loss, let's go. Versus, oh, versus... Mimesis, or Mimesis. When a creature is summoned here, give friendly creatures in the other lane. Plus one. <laughs> Interesting. And then we got a shadow lane, as normal. I like a two drop. And I like that three drop, actually. Even though we do not have the ring of Magicka. But first things first, say hello to all of your opponents. And like all the videos you watch on YouTube. Friendly thing you can do to save the world. So. In this match, we're actually going to want to put our Red Ren Enforcer here, so when we put our Cunning Ally down here, it buffs the Red Ren Enforcer, makes it a 3-3. Interesting that he put this there, and interesting that he's running that. So we're going to put this here. Normally, we would have put that here. <coughs> but alas, it is not the case this time. We usually put our first creature in the non-stealth lane, because then I command more presence. Unless if he's got something powerful. Interesting, you're putting everything in the flanking lane, and I have a feeling... Okay, well, if I put this, if I put any of these creatures in here, it's going to get killed. And not only that, but this Brutal Ashlander could hit my Red Ren Enforcer, or... It could hit the creature to finish it off, like say the Telvanni Arcanist. And do I want the Telvanni Arcanist or the Cunning Ally or the Crystal Tower? I could play Crystal Tower Crafter. In fact, watch this. I'm going to play my Crystal Tower Crafter here. This becomes a 3-3. Shadow shifted over here. I draw a card. I have two 3-3s. And I attack this here to get rid of his awesome Crystal Tower Crafter. Now, he only has two cards in hand, actually. What's unfortunate is he is going to do that, and it is going to hit this 3-3. But that's not really a big deal. And the good news is none of us have anything in the plus 1, plus 0 lane. Wow, sorry about that, friend. It should have hit the Crystal Tower Crafter. Does he have a way to sacrifice it in a mate? Well, most of the sacrificial cards are in intelligence, so he doesn't have to have the other color. I wonder why he did that. Now I wonder... Firebolt, he would have played it. Maybe so that if I only play one spell this turn, he can sack the Brutal Ashlander with whatever spell he's got. It's not a soul split. I really don't know why he did that. There's probably multiple reasons why he hit my Crystal Tower. But, nonetheless, I want to play something in this lane. And then maybe even buff it this turn. But I can only play one card this turn. And I don't want to use my Ash Servant on him. And, oh yeah, this in this deck, Crystal Tower Crafter is not going to get buffed because I don't have that many spells. I do believe I will play the Cunning Ally. Yes, and I would hit his face first, but it's not going to matter. Did not give me a Firebolt, that's unfortunate. I'm putting the Cunning Ally instead of the Murkwater Shaman in here because... If this Brutal Ashlander does go off and hits the Cunning Ally, it's a 3-3. But if it goes off and hits the Murkwater Shaman, it hits a 3-3 and a curse. So I'd rather play the 3 mana. And it's unfortunate that I did not get my Firebolt. I do not know what this one will do, because his Cathay Rot Veteran, whatever he plays into this lane, will buff this lane. So it won't make him a 2-2 to be able to finish this off. I think I might... Oh, interesting that he hit my face and gave me a rune. That's... I do have more cards than him, and it is even his turn, so this is going to go very swell for me. Oh, someone just sent me something on Discord. 2-1 now. Okay. I think what I want to do is trade here, trade here, and hope it hits the 3-3. Okay, what do I want to do here? This Camelorn Sentinel is very potent. If this does not hit it, because that's a 2-4 versus all of that. And he's going to put more in here, so he can buff this side. Except, no, he's not. If I attack here, and then I attack here, this is going to hit him, him, or him. Really doesn't matter that much to me. 
and then I will play one of these cards. Okay, that's unfortunate. But it was not going to get buffed because we do not have that many actions, minus the Tilt Body Archivist. If I play this Camelot Sentinel, this will become a 4 1. I can buff Giant Bat if I play it now. I think the most potent play is Murkwater Shaman in the Stealth Lane. Because then I can buff it next turn. And if need be, I can play Giant Bat. It does have charge, and then Camelorn Sentinel in this lane, and get a three charge, three drain. Although I do want to break him, him to break at least one more rune because he is playing a mage deck that is not aggressive enough to kill me. I'm just going to guess. Okay. Good news is, actually, bad news is that the toughness really doesn't matter in this lane. He's getting a lot of life though, which means I won't be triggering a lot of his rooms. Doesn't really help. And a curse for that is really good. I do like the Camelorn Sentinel play, so watch this. We are going to trigger a rune this turn, so this could go very badly. Usually you'd want to attack him first to get the rune off, but we're not going to do that. We're also not going to play the curse on this first, because this is really going to hurt. And arguments could be made which one should have attacked first, probably the Drain, which is most important to me, and then the Murkwater Shaman. Because if he were to draw a Lightning Bolt, if, and the Shaman had not attacked yet, he would not only kill the Murkwater Shaman, but he would have killed the damage it would have done, instead of just killing the Murkwater Shaman, because that's value. And we're going to do this. And this is just fantastic, this Camelot Sentinel in this lane. <coughs> Unfortunately now, look at his hand, and look at mine. We're about equal. Although this one will keep coming back. And I don't think he has a way to sacrifice that. No, he does. That is pretty lucky for me, actually, because I still have this 4-1. He's not going to kill it, unless he has a Firebolt. I think he would have used it. And this will, unfortunately, give him a, a spell. I can give it five more damage, but I'm not going to. I could Ash Servant and give this one more damage, but I'm not going to. Am I? No, he's got three cards. And then what I'm going to do with the rest of my mana? Tilvani Arcanist? In fact, in that case, do I want to play the? Do I want to get the one extra damage in and risk him getting a lightning bolt or something? I think I do. I think I do. So I'm going to play him here and do this. Buffs this side of my board. Attack with my Murkwater Shaman, and he did not get that prophecy. I still have my curse from the last turn. And this is just great. This game in particular should go faster now, actually, because whatever I play in here into this flanking lane does buff this lane. And that's really not a problem. I can put an heirloom greatsword on one of these characters. Or I could just... There's a lot of things I could do. I could probably kill him this turn because I have lightning bolt and heirloom greatsword separately, not on the same turn. This is five damage, this is four. And if I play this four damage, I can also play a murkwater sandwich, which does not have charge, but it does buff this lane. How about this? How about... This is going... No, I want to save this in case he plays his... Shackle 2-2 from a prophecy. Murkwater Savage. This could be directly for face damage, but I don't think that's necessary. I will... Double curse that. Gets me another action. And my Murkwater Shaman will attack him for 6 damage. Does he get a rune? No, and this does not give him his other rune, and I have four damage. That is the best way I could have seen, I saw it to do. That is the best strategy I saw to get damage at him. And next turn, we win, practically. That does just trade in there. I have a curse, buddy. Four, six. Yep. Let us attack with our Murkwater Savage, and then Lightning Bolt for the finish. Nice. Six wins. And one loss. We are versus Gomi Bear. Another mage deck. Siege. Creatures of Breakthrough. Okay. I'm going to throw away this hand because I want at least a three drop. And I got a two drop. Nice. And we all know the first step of... 
playing this video game is saying hello. And we have the elixir of magicka. Well, Thank you. if we elixir Very this... Nice hey. If we elixir a crystal tower crafter out, he will kill it. With a firebolt. Or something else. Execute. Anything. But it wasn't going to get buffed anyways. This is mostly a 2-2 in our deck. Although we do have a lightning bolt, and we do have a curse. So there's every possibility this could become a 3-3 and attack his 5th legion trainer. If I Murkwater Witch here, I can take away the 1 power, but that doesn't take away the power of the card. And I don't have a 3 drop to Ring of Magicka. Dang it. Okay, how about I play this Crystal Tower Crafter here. And then next turn, if I want to, badly, I can Ring of Magicka, Lightning Bolt, whatever he plays that is now buffed. Like that. Actually, yeah. And then this card gets buffed. Do I get a zero mana? I don't think I have any zero mana in this card, in this deck. So, I w Ooh, Cutting Ally could happen, but that's a chance. I don't want to do it. So, Lightning Bolt, he gets a lot of value from that, actually. And I kill that. And we're on equal hands. I have taken one damage. I have a 3-2 on the board in the stealth lane, unfortunately. I keep a spare blade in my bit. <laughs> spare blades, yeah. Breakthrough 3-2 and a 3-2. Not bad. I get one more attack in with my 3-2. Unless if I Tome of Alteration. In which case he with a mage deck will do something to his character. Or to mine. Probably a lightning bolt and kill it. I don't like that plan. But what I can do, a really, really good plan, is Ash Servant to kill the 3-2 here, and have a 3-2, or a 2-2 to trade in here, except he's going to do 1 damage to my face with the breakthrough. I do like that plan, though. That just gives me the ultimate... The ultimate board control, in my opinion. And our hands are still pretty equal. Although, we have to keep in mind, one of those is 1 mana for a 1-0. So he has a 1 damage, almost ping when he wants it. That's okay with me. I think I got a lot of value out of the Crystal Tyrocrafter. And you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to Tome of Alteration and trade that there. Which will give him his Prophecy Rune. But I will have drawn a card, so let's see what I draw. Or is this the right time? I think so, because this is in the non-stealth lane. And that did not change what I wanted to do. Murkwater Witch is not going to get played this turn unless if he gets a Prophecy and plays a creature. Nope. I was going to say if he plays the Shrieking Harpy, 2-2, two, two, it becomes a 1-1, one, one, and it has a 1-1 one, one guard in the way. Looking pretty good. Excuse me. We have board control. Oh, that is just beautiful. That is the best possible answer to this card. And to the point where I'm sorry for him. And then we play our Murkwater Shaman. And we are not going to hit his face this turn. I think I should have played the Murkwater Witch into this lane. Because it guards against the stealth lane. And if I was going to put my Murkwater Shaman into the stealth lane, then it would be guarded. But now I'm going to put the Murkwater Shaman into this lane because it's protected by a guard. And this is a really good lane to have control over. Only problem is, now he's got six cards next turn. One of which is just a plus one, plus oh for me to have control over this board. That's annoying. And cunning allies don't help too much. I do have curse, if need be. What I'm looking at is this four damage guy. I need three damage more, and I'm not going to use the Murkwater Shaman. I could giant snake, but it's a guard, so I don't get any face damage in. That is a very good guard for him to play. A giant bat. That does get me my three damage. I'll tell you what, if we're going to play giant bat, we might as well play the cunning ally too, don't we? Let's see if we get the thing and we don't. Which means we're not gonna play this cunning ally. We're going to play the giant bat. And let's keep the guard, so I'm gonna use the curse. Right? Yes. Breakthrough doesn't matter, because that's enough damage exactly, and unfortunately, we're going to give him... I'd rather keep this Murkwater Shaman, so I'm not going to attack his face. 
I like the split presence I have compared to his hand size, which is five. Oh, okay. That does not matter, except for the fact that it has breakthrough. And I have a curse and a Kairos Reaper, so that's five, in which case I have four on the board of damage to his five toughness. And I'm going to break a rear in this turn, likely. I could giant snake it, but that has guard, so I don't get any face damage, and it just delays the inevitable. And... Hmm. If need be, I can Cunning Ally, Ring of Magicka to get the guaranteed Firebolt right, and still play my giant snake. But let's hit his face first, because we are going to do that this turn. Playing him in the stealth lane, because I want to put some more pre- Really? I want to put some more pressure in this lane. Because now it's not this lane that's so threatening. Good news is this is just 4 damage to me, so I can I can take it if I really want to. But I don't think I really want to. So I'm going to play my giant snake. Potentially a waste. I get the feeling we're playing against a late game deck, in which case I am going downhill very quickly. Or I am falling down, rather. That's okay, except the fact that it trades well. Curse. Oh, what? Nicely done. Now I wish I had that giant snake, kind of, except for the fact that the Drez Renegade negates it. That doesn't do anything. Except for the fact that I have two curses, so that's four damage. What can I use the curses for? Well, that's going to happen. And then he has a really powerful board. And I do not have my Shadow Shift to move the Murkwater Shaman over here, so it's basically dead. I also have Finish Off. I don't know how I got that. How did I get that? Did I just draw it? I did not know I had to Finish Off in this deck. And I like this Murkwater Shaman, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to attack his face first. Hopefully he doesn't draw the kill me spell. He didn't. Cool. Now we're going to keep both of our creatures because... They're both going to be three ones though. That's very difficult for me because he will have a firebolt, no doubt. And we're going to play our little angel hexmage and double curse. And we will do five damage to his face because one damage is breakthrough. Except it doesn't look like he got his thing. And to make the game even closer to the finish off, him. Next turn, this doesn't do anything. Unless we place a guard. And we don't have any more triggers for the Lil Angel Hex Mage. Unless we get another curse. Okay, so we don't. That's unfortunate. That's about six damage we lost there. And this is a lot of damage. Choose another card. He has four more cards to really kill me. And he didn't get it. I could easily lose this turn, so I don't want to. Let's not. Oh, shoot, he got a prophecy. Does that does that kill one of my guys? Effectively, yes. Good news. I'm not dead next turn or anything. I'm not really in a rush. Actually, I kind of am, because he has a huge hand, and it looks like he has a lot of guards, too. Judging by things. Let's do this and deal two damage to him. And play him. And play him. Keep in mind, these all have breakthrough. So he is not going to pull this back. Right? Unless he has a Winter's Touch. Or deal three damage to all enemy creatures. And then Firebolt. Okay, so he's killed one of my creatures. No Winter's Touch, though. Desperate Conjuring, can it save you? Hakeem Emmerich kills another creature. Good game, my friend, good game. Another game, so now we're 7-1. to one. Wait, what? Oh, arena is complete. I got all seven. Brawler. Seven wins. Oh, is that that's just it? Wow, that was actually really easy for a first arena. With only one loss. Does the loss does the loss even matter? Okay. So this was this would have technically been one fifty gold, so let's see what we get. Already worth. Promotion award. 
or reward. And a pack. And a pack. And a pack. And an adoring fan! I want to do Arena more often. Already. Even though Chaos Arena is done. Well, holy cow. Okay, so we've got our packs. And... What is it? Ooh. Cool cards. Okay. I don't believe I had three Dress Tormentors, so that's cool. Sageous Agent! Cool! Because I did not have three of those. And the final pack. Nothing really of note. Alright! Well, that was the Chaos Arena finalized, and holy cow, that was actually pretty easy. For me, at least. I mean, this was just my first thing, and I, we got so much out of that. So do play Arena in the last 15 hours at least once, because it is crazy fun, and it's really easy. Or at least, okay, I'm just being cocky at this point. It's not easy. But that'll be all for today, guys. So, please remember to like all the videos you watch on YouTube. To subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. Leave comments down below for conversation, because that's cool. And share this video with your friends if you think they'll like it as well. That'll be all for today. See you guys.